Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God, the strength of all who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because in our weakness we can do nothing good without you, give us the help of your grace, that in keeping your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from Jeremiah, chapter 17, verses 5 through 10. Thus says the Lord, cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. The word of the Lord.
A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are in your sins. Then those who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus came down with the twelve apostles and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cursed, cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. 
Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Be seated. These past five days I was in Chicago. Before you think I was off on some sort of glorious vacation, remember a couple of things. It's February in Chicago, huh? and the sidewalks there this week were filled high with piles of that nasty gray snow. The other thing you need to remember is I did not spend most of my time going out and doing stuff exciting. I was copy editing a 70-page paper on racism and the beloved community that the House of Bishops Theology Committee is writing and getting ready to publish. But I did manage to get out a bit. I have always loved that Midwestern hustle and bustle of the Chicago streets, the crowds that are there, the people in the restaurants and bars, everybody against one another having a great time. What absolutely floored me this time in visiting Chicago was how much people's habits have changed. Most glaringly, when I would walk down the street, people would purposely avoid me. They were scared of being touched scared of getting COVID. It reminded me of two years ago when this entire pandemic thing began, and I forget the specific date, but one day in Little Rock, it would have been about two years ago, I think maybe in a couple of weeks, the Little Rock Public Library sent out an email announcing that it would be closing at the end of the day due to the pandemic. That afternoon, before it closed, we all ran to the library to check out as many books as we could. I can still remember the last person who touched me for about another year. It was some person from my gym who I didn't know that well, but who gave me a pat on the arm as we were standing in the checkout line at the library. Subconsciously, we knew that something that we had always taken for granted, something that we human beings need, that is human touch, that something was about to be forbidden. I may be an introvert, but I was taught early on in this vocational life on the importance of touch. As I've told any number of people who wanted to become hospital visitors through the years, don't worry so much about what sort of prayer to have with the person who's in the hospital bed, but rather, if medically possible, touch the patient. It makes a connection that no amount of simply talking can do because humans need touch. Given that background, let's take a look at today's gospel lesson. For me, what Jesus says in the reading is not nearly so important as what was happening. Did you notice that Luke states that everyone in the crowd is trying to touch Jesus for they find themselves being healed when they do so? It is but one of the innumerable gospel stories of instances in which Jesus touches people or they reach out to him in order to be healed. Jesus and the less than whole people around him instinctively know that touch can heal. It's something that the church has known as well from its very beginning. The healing that the church brings is not so much in what it says. After all, the church throughout history has said some fairly awful things, things that have hurt people to the core of their being and denied them the dignity that they were due. 
but despite what it's officially said on occasion, the church has never stopped touching. Think about it for a moment. Our sacramental actions, those essential things that we do in the church, require touch. Anytime I go somewhere and baptize someone, I'm required to place the sign of the cross on the forehead of the one being baptized. In the Eucharist, the Book of Common Prayer demands that I touch the bread and the wine. At marriage services, couples are required to hold hands. At confirmation, as we did this morning at 8 o'clock at this place, I must touch the person being confirmed. Such actions have been an integral part of the church for going on 2,000 years. At some level, we know that touch is more important for healing and wholeness than all the words in the world. Somehow, just like the people in today's gospel, we want to touch Jesus in order to be healed. That's why we're here. The desire never wanes. At some level, the need to touch is, I think, why the church is so focused on resurrection of all things. The church and St. Paul have always been emphatic in belief of the resurrection of Christ. As Paul put it in that lesson today, our faith is futile if Christ has not been raised. Something radically has happened following that first Easter. Those frightened followers of Jesus discovered the risen Christ later on in whatever way they needed to see him, in whatever way that the risen Christ could be touched. Remember Thomas, who wanted to put his hands in Jesus' side? Well, also remember how even in this day and age, we keep seeing the risen Christ in flesh and blood human beings, not simply in abstract theological statements. Resurrection makes it possible to touch the risen Christ in ways far bigger than simply a resuscitated Jesus would have been in one historical place and time. If there's going to be healing and wholeness among people, there's going to have to be resurrection and somebody's got to be touched, so to speak. Our story of faith is proclaimed by St. Paul is that we are now the resurrected body of Christ. The risen Christ is not an independent entity out there somewhere, but is now as close as our own bodies, our own flesh and blood. Therefore, if there is to be healing, then we, the new body of Christ, will be involved in the touching of lives necessary to see that it takes place. We all know that in our guts, at some level, we need to be touched in order to be made whole and healthy. That's why we're here. We're the resurrected body of Christ. And our calling is to bring good news to anyone who wants to be made whole. To those among us who have not yet felt healed, who may have been hurt by the words of the church in the past perhaps, I say, don't worry so much about what the church says on occasion. If you need some good news, then come touch the body of Christ in the form of the members here. Touch the holy in baptism. Touch the holy in the Eucharist. Touch the holy through confirmation. Finding the healing can come to us when people make connections with other actual human beings, not simply with an institution. After you feel healing that might come into your own life, it's then time to turn around and be an evangelist. Now, don't be scared by the word. We think of an evangelist as someone a bit offensive on a street corner somewhere. But if today's gospel is true, then words aren't that important. All we must do for healing to occur out in the world is touch some lives up there. A pat on the shoulder, a shake on the hand, a touch of the elbow, sometimes doing that for the most least likely of people the people who felt on the margins, that can be the way that the resurrected Christ is made known. And if that first contact is made, then maybe that person so touched will perhaps come to this place so that these holy touches of water and bread and wine and hands on foreheads will work their miracles as well. What we do today in this room is but a prelude to what we are called to do every day in machine shops and offices and stores and schools. Be a witness to the resurrection. 
be an agent of resurrection and touch someone's life. Don't be afraid also to have our own lives changed as we are touched by the stories and lives of others. It is thus that we proclaim the good news that the living Christ is still in our midst as close as the next person we encounter. Amen. We continue with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Join me in the prayers of the people. Form 6, found on page 392 in the Book of Common Prayer. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all the people in our daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are all alone. For all government leaders, especially President Joe, Governors Asa and Kevin, Mayor George, for this community, the nation, and the world. For all the work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For those serving in the military, for all who are in danger, sorrow, and kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, for the and the needy. For the people of the Jim. 
you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The, the peace of the Lord be always with you. This is so wonderful to be able to have boys and girls to be able to be a part of the scouting world, and so that I'm very proud and I'm, for. And I'm in the Boy Scouts of America organization. The Boy Scouts of America organization. That is exactly correct. I can't think of a better person to be a part than those who are a part. And so thank you so much for being a, a part of this amazing uh, organization that helps build that internal part and also the things that we do in this world in the way that we serve others. And so I'd like to be able to offer a prayer today. Let us pray. Almighty God, creator of us all, grant us the patience to wait and listen to your voice. Help us not to seek answers in the silence of prayer, 
but rather to let us know your thoughts, O God. We pray today for God's children, for all of the children of this world. May they find peace and love in their families and schools and learn the love of Jesus Christ for each and every one of them through our lives as we interact with them on a daily basis. We pray you for our young people who are seeking a cause which is worthy of their life's commitment and leaders who are deserving of their devotion. We know that our youth must deal with a host of options, so we pray that they may choose the leadership of Jesus Christ. We pray now for our scouts as they continue to follow the scout law and work toward being trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. I pray God's grace will be with them as they work towards their badges so that they will have tangible accomplishments of the work that is done within their heart. I pray grace now to be upon these young men and this young woman as they do their work in scouting. I pray God's blessing to be upon them. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you for your work and your development in being able to be the very best citizens you can be in this country. And so I offer you, can you turn and can you give away to our congregation and to the congregation online? Thank you. We are proud of the work that you are doing and we are proud and encourage that work today. God bless you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. We do have a couple of announcements for us today as we uh, move to this time. Uh, first and foremost, it's our honor to be able to welcome our bishop for this time of worship. If you notice that we are not having a confirmation service today, that would be because we had our confirmation service at 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, Harvey Schuster and Kimberly Elizalde were confirmed at the 8 o'clock service. They were very excited. Normally we have uh, teenagers that are lined up across the front for uh, confirmation along with adults, of course. Um, but this was an opportunity for uh, Kimberly and Harvey who are a part of that 8 o'clock service to celebrate that confirmation with the group that surrounds them whom they worship with. With the bishop's visitation, it is the tradition of each church to be able to take up any of the offering not designated for a pledge then is given to the bishop's discretionary fund. It allows the bishop to be able to have the freedom to financially help people in the work and the ministry that he does. His boundary is much wider than mine. I'm able to help people here in the Fort Smith area. He's able to help all in Arkansas and then even beyond with those who need help especially the seminarians as we send them off to go to study to be in the priesthood and for those who have special needs along the way that he encounters. So please do remember the bishop's discretionary fund uh, in our loose plate offering time. We had our vestry retreat and so I need to do a little bit of business. We do have some new executive officers for our church. Our senior warden like last year, will be Ron Lawson. So thank you, Ron, for serving as our senior warden. Our junior warden this year will be Mike Spence, who attends the 8 o'clock service. Our clerk is Mariko Clifton. So welcome, Mariko. She'll be our clerk. And our treasurer, uh, working with our acolytes as well, as well as the money, is Mike Tickler, who has served with us for several years now as our treasurer, so thank you, Mike. 
Please know that uh, tomorrow is Valentine's Day, and if you forgot, you can stop by the big gift store. They've set some, side, some things aside for your convenience that you might like to look at. Our, uh, our artist in residence for these next two months is Robert Sutton. Hi, Robert. He is right here. So he comes to us. He's newer to the church, and he brings an artistic skill that is on display, and you can purchase items in our bookstore. Our stained glass window, finally, our stained glass window repairs have reached as far as our craftsmen can go. That means he's repaired the wood and the framing. It's been sealed and painted. He has put up the aluminum frames that will hold the panes of glass that will protect and also insulate this, uh, the, the windows. The sizes have been ordered and now the glass is being cut and so he's going off to another job and he'll come back once that glass is delivered. That means that our 21 windows will finally be uh, completely restored, repaired, repainted, and now protected with double insulated glass that won't be destructive to the lead and to the wood. Um, this is a preservation that will take us for about 75 years um, before they'll need to do that work of any kind of restoration work. So, we're very excited to have that responsibility and to be almost at the end of it. We are working on something very special from our vestry and from our committee on stained glass windows. Uh, so uh, that is a large, very large piece of what's coming up for us as well. And finally, you may have heard in our prayers of the people, we had a death this week of one of our members, David Clifton. There will be... Uh, Mariko and Eric, our condolences, and Scott, our condolences are with you. The funeral will be sometime this week, I understand, and so we'll be um, looking to be able to schedule a funeral for David Clifton. Uh, our prayers are with you all, and we know God's arms of love just gathered him up this week. If you're celebrating a birthday or an animal, oh my goodness, thank you so much. I was waxing eloquent. There is an important piece because we're coming up on Lent. Let me invite our teacher for our Lenten series on Sunday, Father Jeff. The Lenten study, Sunday morning Lenten study, is on Reinhold Niebuhr. Who? <laughs> Why'd you do that? Ah. He was a great uh, theologian and public fi uh, figure from the 1930s through, well, he died in 1971. You've heard of him, you just don't know it. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. That was Reinhold Heber, one side of his contribution. There's another important side. He was one of two or three major influences on Martin Luther King, both thinking and action. And because Niebuhr lived through King's active years, they were, in fact, regularly in correspondence, and King publicly supported, I mean, Niebuhr publicly supported King through some of the more controversial decisions that he made. Reinhold Niebuhr is still with us. The bishop is working on a 70-page document from the church on racism. So the hope is that by studying Niebuhr, it might shed some light on our struggles today. Chambers Hall, 915, beginning the first Sunday in Lent, March 6th. All the cool people will be there, so <laughs> you want to be there too. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. If you're celebrating a birthday or an anniversary, I'd like to receive a blessing on that occasion. I invite you to gather with me at the altar rails. Thank you, Jordan. 
vows to the Most High. with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you've caused a new light to shine in our hearts to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you've made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you've brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, your gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with John and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation,
God to the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.